What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today we're going to be doing a very different stream than I usually do. I'm going to be going through uh, one by one the cards I would like to see changed in PvZ Heroes. The thing I'm going to be concentrating on is trying to make the game balance. Like if there's any cards that are way too good, uh, I'm going to be concentrating probably mostly on those, and that will actually allow the game to be more fun. I feel like that's the point. You want a lot of different strategies to work, uh, and it seems like there's a lot of strategies. For example, putting a lot of gargantuars on the field usually does not do very well, uh, so that's I'm going to be getting to that in a second. So going to be concentrating again on are there any cards which are just way too overpowered uh, and need a nerf? I'm also going to be concentrating on legendary specifically, maybe even some super rares and event cards that are just way too bad. I mean, there are some legendaries that it's just there's absolutely no time that it ever works in a deck. A perfect example of this is, let's say, a card like Wannabe Hero. Like, this is fun. It's kind of like this cool strategy of keep your health as high as possible and then put this on the field. But at seven costs, this is useless. It's way too slow, doesn't do enough, and it just dies to every removal card in the game. Doesn't matter if it's Shamrock, it's Squash, <laughs> Briar Rose, Cobb Cannon, doesn't even matter. So it really just want to, like, make cards. Uh, we'll even get to cards like Chump Champion that's just impossible to really find a deck to put this in it's just too bad uh, it's gonna be concentrating on those i'm not gonna really be nitpicking thank you terry cruz main for subscribing welcome to the family i'm not gonna be nitpicking cards like potato mine which really are not very good doesn't really see a lot of play uh just because i don't think that every single card in the game uh needs to be competitive it would be nice but i'm really gonna be concentrating again much more on things that are gonna make the game as a whole much more fun the game doesn't become way more fun if potato mine becomes playable uh, all right, so we're going to jump in. So this is how I'm going to structure this. I'm going to be going uh, one by one of the really obvious things that need to be changed in this game, one card at a time. I'm going to be going in order in terms of how urgent I think it would be to actually change that card. So the most blatant one we're going to be starting off with, of course, is going to be this guy, Shamrocket, and then I'm going to be moving on to second and third. Uh, so after I sort of get through the ones that I think are really obviously need to be changed. Uh, then we're going to be moving on to maybe some more controversial ones and really have a bit of a brainstorm session together with the live chat. So if at any point you have any suggestions in terms of cards that you feel like really a small change to them um, is going to make a really big difference in terms of the fun of the game, definitely let me know on the side. But for this first part, I'm not going to be looking too much at the Twitch chat. I'm more going to be... Uh, explaining the obvious ones and then eventually towards the end we're going to have a discussion all right the number one card if i could change one card right now oh my gosh pickle okay if there's one guy i could get rid of my friend list <laughs> its name is his name is pickle stop challenging me i'm still streaming pickle we're not doing this now <laughs> thank you pickle for all your constant support he probably doesn't even know i'm streaming all right next All right, Shamrocket. The reason that Shamrocket makes the game way less fun to play is just because every single card that costs five or more on the zombie side is basically completely unplayable. I mean, there's there's even just the traditional Smashing Garg. Let's just say even Supernova Garg. Let's say a card like Mondo Bronto, which again, seems like a lot of value. It does a lot for its cheap cost. The problem is, is that you just play on the field. If the opponent has a Shamrock in their hands, this thing is dead and you still have a few extra sun in which to actually develop your own tempo. It just makes such a blatantly bad trade. It's the same problem with King of the Grill. I would love to make decks where King of the Grill is actually a useful card, but it's really a piece of trash garbage. Nerf Garg, Octo Zombie, Zombot, these the, the main problem, even Garg throwing Garg. The main issue is having a, such an easy, efficient removal card uh, for all the big strategies. I'll tell you another problem with Shamrocket as well is that it negates even smaller cards that you want to be buffing up. Like even Paparazzi would be way, way better if it weren't for Shamrocket, because this means it forces the opponent to take care of this while it's small. Otherwise, they're, you know, if there was, if it wasn't for Shamrocket, they're gonna have to spend a ton of resources taking care of this uh, in the lake, and it would make Paparazzi a lot better. It would make cards even just like 
on life of the party. Again, if they are not able to deal with this right away and you grow your own life of the party and you spend so many resources and you've built a deck that's so swarmy and is able to buff the on life of the party, even if you do accomplish all that, they can answer it for a three cost card, uh, which is just way too good. Even like the whole beastly class, I feel like has a theme that you're growing cards with lunch boxes and with your vitamin Z's and with your hover ghosts. These are all cards that are adding stats onto your card. Even a card like Orca is completely useless because you are investing two cards into one by sticking that that guy on in the amphibious lane and is doing a whole bunch of damage there but they are able to answer your two cards that cost more than three with one card that only costs three it's just way too good i don't even think sham rocket to be honest would be balanced if we made it cost four i think it's still way too good it still has exactly the same problem you're still gonna run three or four sham rockets in every single guardian deck uh, regardless of what the meta is it doesn't even matter like you want to force players to run sham rocket into a meta where everyone's spamming gargs and going super late game so you have an answer to it not that you just automatically run three or four of these in every deck and it makes a certain meta completely unplayable uh i i would say this has to cost at least five i could even see this costing six to be honest now some of the people who only watch the first minute of my shamrocket video i have a video on frying up gaming explaining uh why i think shamrocket needs to nerf they're like fry how could Shamrocket cost five? Then it'll just be exactly a worse version of Squash. Because Squash, instead of having the limitation of a zombie has to have at least four attack, this just destroys any zombie. It's way better. And yes, the answer is, is that Squash needs to cost more too. If Shamrocket would cost five, Squash would cost six. And like Doomshroom then, which is also is probably basically the next card i'm gonna i'm just gonna do all the removal cards one after the next here uh doomstream is another just completely stupid overpowered uh card it's not run as much because it will also is a liability to your own plans but at the end of the day this is a card if there is ever if shamrock gets nerfed then everyone's just gonna run doomstream <laughs> it's too powerful this is way too powerful the fact you can take out three or four gargs all for five cost I would say if Shamrock could cost five, Squash would need to cost six, and this card would cost seven. I feel like that maybe could work. It still makes the problem with that is that, I mean, even let's say your five cost guards, you know, your smallest guys that you want to be spamming onto the field. Thank you, Jax, for subscribing. Nine months. Uh, really appreciate it. So. So even Supernova Garg, if Shamrocket is a thing, you can't actually gain any tempo by playing Supernova Garg. You play this for five, they answer for Shamrocket. At least the opponent is not going to be gaining sun and be able to actually play, you know, play another card together with that. So I I could honestly, and thank you PVZ Tryhard for subscribing, it's 25 months, and we're coming up with one Pixlull is going to come up after it's done ringing here. Welcome to the family one. There you are. I, I'm not even so sure if I would want Shamrocket to be five. I, I could really see Shamrocket costing six, Squash costing seven, and Doomstream costing eight. I, I'm serious about this right now. Because I would like to see cards like Mondo Bronto, cards like Supernova Gar I wonder if these would be too powerful if, Sha if, if hard removal costs that much. It really depends on the other removal cards in the game. You guys have to realize something. Sham Rocket and Squash, the Guardian and, 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 and Solar Glasses are not the only um, things with removal in the game. In fact, one of the more, more powerful, and I would love to see, the weakest class in the game, probably on the plant side for sure, is the Smarty class. You have to understand what this change would end up doing to the Smarty class too. The Smarty class would be the only class that could remove a Gargantuar for three costs. Now I know this bounces it back in your hand, but you are still, it's an immediate answer. It takes so much tempo off the field. They're gonna have to spend all of those resources replaying the guard. Spring Bean is not a card which is considered overpowered, but this almost might, would become the new Shamrocket if sham rocket was nerfed i would almost um, i could even imagine thank you bumbles for subscribing stuff out of here i could imagine spring being costing four seriously just so again gargs become playable 
Um, this would again, but though I don't, I wouldn't, I would not want this to see this cost more than four though, because I want to see the smarty class become a good control class. I mean, you have balance into dragon, like being able to, once there's a meta where there are a lot of big cards, no one plays big cards. No one good at the game is going to be buffing one minion a lot or playing a lot of cards. But once that becomes viable because Shamrock gets nerfed and Squash gets nerfed, we'll even get into Briar Rose and Cobb Cannon and Ice Spore in a second. That would just make bounce a thing and would actually make like this is probably anyway the most the strongest strategy in the smarty class uh is bounce the bounce decks we've done even with green shadow is not a very good hero um you know really really is or is actually a good strategy the three bounce cards are going to be bounce and then you got jelly bean on four uh, which can bounce. Obviously, you need another bean, so you have to kind of build a deck around it, and then you have Jumping Bean on five. I'd, honestly, Jumping Bean in a guard meta is way overpowered. You get three, two on the field, and you remove their six, seven, eight cost card. I can see these getting nerfed too. Like, this would go to four. Jelly Bean would go to four. Maybe stay at four, and then this would cost six. I don't know. That would also, by the way, open up Witch Hazel as actually a viable card, possibly, because once, the only time, listen, the only time Witch Hazel is good is if the opponent sticks a huge Gargantuar onto the field and uses up all of their brains doing so. Then you play Witch Hazel another lane and you answer that. I mean, this is a really, really fun card that's useless because no one plays the one big guy. They play a small guy and then they're teleporting in the rest of their minions, you know? I don't think Jumping Bean's a bad card. I think it's a good card. I just don't think that if you're playing Control, I, we, the decks we run Jumping Bean, it actually does well. So it's really not a bad card at all. I'd, this might be, this might honestly still be a problem, though. It's so weird how this card Spring Bean that we hardly ever use. Maybe this would have to cost four in this new meta just to be able to make Gargantuars viable. This would have to cost five, and this would have to cost six. I, I could see it, but maybe we just keep this just so smart it becomes a good class finally, you know? Anyway, all right, so what are some of the other really, again, if, if, let's say our goal is to make these late game cards, two, two strategies. One is buffing one small minion a lot, like Unlife, even, you know, using vitamin Zs, for example, buffing that one minion, even like vampires become so much worse because if you pull it off and you're able to grow this one time, Shamrock it. So let's say we... We're trying to really make the buff a single minion strategy actually work in this game and make cards maybe like Octo Zombie. Thank you, Weenie Beanie, for subscribing. Brian, you need to nerf me. I really appreciate it. Weenie Beanie. 13 months. Holy moly with that. You want to make cards like your Supernova Gargs, like your Mondo Brontos, like your Garg Throne Gar. I mean, this is one of the most fun cards in the game, but it's ruined by stupid removal being so cheap. Let's say that's the goal. I mean, let's look at some of the other cards. Just Wizard Garg. I would love to see a, a, a meta where Kitchen Sink actually works. The main problem is Shamrocket, Mechasaur, all these late game cards actually becoming efficient. Gas Giant, doesn't even matter. Um, wannabe Hero for sure. Even cards like Undying Pharaoh then become really good when it costs a lot to remove this card, you know? Even six cost Shamrocket, at least it's a one for one trade, you know what I mean? Uh, so the big question at that point the big question, you know, Shark, this is a great example. Even Gondola. Gondola becomes a playable card if removing a big minion is more expensive. Right now, this is almost unplayable. You can teleport in in some weird ramp deck. Uh, but otherwise, sticking this on the field is just stupid. They just shamrock it. Um, all right, so let's say that's the goal to make big cards playable on the zombie side. We'll get into in the, removal, the, 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 the zombie removal cards in just a second here. Uh, we'll talk about exploding fruitcake, which is going to be literally the next thing I talk about. But let's just concentrate on on the on the plant, the, the way, way, way over-efficient plant removal cards. What else would we have to take care of? So I talked about bounce. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't know until testing, but I have a feeling that bounce is still going to end up causing a huge problem to Garg decks. You know, and even just Shamrocket is still equally trades with most Gargs. I don't know. Shamrocket at six. I honestly think Shamrock, if you want a game, by the way, uh, Legends of Runeterra basically has this thing where bouncing a card costs five, I think, and then destroying it outright costs seven, and then a big field clear costs nine. Like, I, I, I think that that actually made big cards viable in the game. But anyway, uh, what just happened here? 
Thank you guys for all your support. Okay, so what are, there's going to be three more cards in the solar class we're going to have to talk about. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is Ice Boar. This is another huge problem. Again, this doesn't see a lot of play just because there's such better options when it comes to removing. But really, when I see opponents run Ice Boar, they usually do a good job. At the end of the day, you can remove any card in the game for two. I think this would have to cost at least three, at least three or four in order to have a world where Garg decks are viable, this would have to cost at least three or four. Make this efficient, but this is, it's just actually too strong. Want to add a little stats to it as well to give it a second use? Like, what about making this a four cost four one or something like that? Maybe that would be too good because four, four damage on turn four isn't bad. Maybe even a four cost three one. I could see, I could see this. But again, then you have like a really cheap circumstantial. The the problem with I Spore is that if they stick the Garg in front of one of your minions, unless that minion's a team up, you can't really play I Spore to remove it. So it's circumstantial, but it's also a very very cheap removal I card. I just arrived. So that's Sorry sort of you want the efficient but thank ones you for to be having me in the new nut deck. Hey guys. Um, <laughs> thank you, Platinum Nuke. It's three months. Okay, so. I, I honestly think in that case, I Spore just to sort of balance out the removal meta it should cost four, four cost three, one maybe. I think Briar Rose is going to be a humongous problem too. Because at the end of the day, a Briar Rose will just so dominate any Garg deck, particularly because of this card, Little Buddy. Because it's in the same class, it's solar, and you can stick Briar Rose and then Little Buddy's for free. Every single, I mean, you can counter with Briro's little buddy counters two different guards, two seven cost cards. So, I I, I don't know about Briar Rose. It, you know, Briar Rose has gone through the chain. It used to be six and it was almost unplayable, but that was before there was good ramp in the game. That was before little buddy existed. I, I could see Briar Rose in this scenario actually going to six and actually still then being a viable card. Now, right now, Briar Rose seems like good at five it's actually decent every time i use briar rose in a deck it actually works but seeing if if the meta was gargantuars big late game zombies or single again spending a lot of resources into buffing one big zombie briar rose becomes so much better at five to the point where it's probably overpowered <sighs> As the meta adapts like that, the reason Briar Rose is not as good is because it can only cover one lane and, you know, you're not getting that humongous value out of it um, from killing humongous cards. Smaller cards being killed by that, the better. So I would see Briar Rose going to six. And then another problematic card, which anyway is overpowered right now, is Cobb Cannon. Uh, this would have to cost at least seven. <laughs> because again, little buddy Cobb Cannon at six just counters everything and puts six six of stats in the field i think this could go to seven costs this would still be a really powerful i mean bra rose on six cop can on seven would just wreck garg decks and you know what so would spring bean bouncing bean and jumping bean and jelly bean i mean would also just wreck garg decks i mean it would also really make them unplayable you'd have to change a lot of these cards around what exactly would we do? Okay, one thing you could do to Briar Rose is actually reduce its stats. I think 3-4 might be a little bit too much. Like, what if we made this a 6 cost 2-4 that at least it dies to Rolling Stone? So there's this huge liability of running Briar Rose. The fact it's so easily countered by by Rolling Stone. I'm even going to be getting into another, another thing when I talk about Chump Champion. How if we actually change Chump Champion and make it into a playable card... That would actually also be a counter to anything with two attack. Um, just because of uh, what we're going to do with it anyway. Is it going to be two attack or three attack? Let me just take a look. I don't even remember exactly what Jump Champion does. It's a little like, it's minus one or two or less. Actually, this would be a counter to even three three attack cards, which is going to be a good thing. We're going to need that. Um, anyway... I think in this scheme, Briar Rose would have to at least cost six, even without any stat changes, and Cobb Cannon would have to cost seven. Again, this at six cost, it's just too good against Gar. At least the five and six cost guards can get off the hook against the Cobb Cannon deck, as long as they don't have a Sunflower. One Sunflower on the field, now you're playing this on turn six and you have the same problem, but 
little buddy Cobb Cannon. It's really, really strong. I, I could I could see these costing six and seven. These would be really, really good cards at six and seven still in a Garg meta. But just for that to exist. I think three-headed Chomper would probably also have to go to seven just because it would be way too good again against a Garg meta. This is actually a very decent control card. Uh, you can see that in the three-headed, just look up Frime Up three-headed Chomper if you want to see the deck. I really showcase this in a regular standard control Wall Knight deck. I feel like, again, if we're making Gargs viable, three-headed Chomper is way too strong, so you'd have to make this seven. But at seven, this would be fine. This really is a playable card at seven. If you get against a Garg meta, like against this meta where people are sticking big cards in the field, this, this card at seven is ridiculously good. I mean, really, really good. All right, some people in the chat are asking me about Cuke. Is Cuke too good in a Garg meta? I don't think so, because it's not only a liability to your own ground. It, there is a way to play around it, which is very simply stick that one Gargantua on heights. And even if the second one goes on the ground, great. So they're able to Cuke the one on the ground now. If they wait too long, it's not going to work. This is countered very well by defensive end. It does, doesn't do anything to Amphibious or to... By the way, you know who becomes really good when you, when you make all these changes? You know what becomes actually a playable card? It's just Deep Sea Garg. I didn't even talk about it. Six cost seven eight. This would I this card almost might need a nerf. I think it might be fine though. You know, Shamrocket will only 1v1 trade this, and there's gonna be fewer Shamrockets. Hmm. But anyway, buffing guards doesn't help. That's my problem. I don't think buffing guard, because you can literally double the stats of every guard. People are just gonna run more, more removal. <laughs> it's just gonna be more important. And you're gonna have all more shamrockets in the meta. It's not gonna change it at all. It's not gonna actually work. But anyway, <sighs> I, again, I'm really trying to, by the way, make these changes without completely reworking cards. There is going to be a couple of cards later that when I say reworking, I mean change its abilities, change what the text is. There's going to be a couple times I'm going to do that because there's cards which are impossible to rework. But if we could just add one cost or lower stats or something to some of these cards... I think that would work. All right, so we talked a little bit about what I would like to see on the zombie side. What about lawnmower? I'd even consider this. Would this have to cost five? Would this be too good in a guard? Well, you can also play around it. Maybe this would have to cost five. It's possible in this in this scheme. It just means the solar all the solar cards would be one, two, three, four, five. Six. I think these these six cards you change. I mean, you kind of like fixed this overpower class. Okay, maybe the seventh card I would actually change. I'll, I'll do this now, and then I'll get into fruitcake and the zombie remo big removal. Last card I would change is this. This is way too. <laughs> if I'm gonna add in a seventh, one cost three two. You know how good this would be as an aggro card at one cost three two. Same thing when played. Zombie con conjures a mon. Those monsters actually become better when removal because a lot of really big monsters in the game but besides the point but it would make the monster a little not a huge liability but it would make it a little bit better one cost three two it's still viable i think you need this card to, that's still a little overpowered by the way some people are saying one cost three one in the in the chat and i i really would i like the fact that there is a solar aggro strat that's viable um I th f f some people are also saying 4-1. I, I don't know. 4-1 makes Nibble better. If we're if our goal is to make the if our goal is to make the Beastie class better, 4-1 is 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 what Haunted Pumpkin should be. Because then Nibble counters it. Nibble actually becomes a really good control card. <laughs> because it counters one of the most problematic one drops in the game. You know, if we're making if we're making Galactic Cactus, which we'll talk about later, I'm just kind of thinking out loud right now, but if 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 we would make Galactic Cactus into a 2-1, because this is a pretty problematic overpowered card, and therefore it's countered by Nibble. I mean, maybe maybe the Beastie class just becomes a control class now. Nibble is, is like, if you can't write the Bungie, Plumber, and Rolling Stone, Nibble's like useless. But, um, you know... Just run Poison Shroom if you're nerfing Pumpkin to 3-1 or 3-2 or 3-1? No. Poison, first of all, fine. Okay, use Poison Shroom. Second of all, Poison Shroom doesn't remove the, the card if there's a card stuck in front of it. 
it doesn't clear that lane, which is very important for aggro decks. That's why something which a 3-1 is way better than Poison Shroom. It only has one attack when it's fronted and only three attack when it's going face. Uh, because again, really, it's for them to put a four attack, four health guy in front of Haunted Pumpkin is very inefficient in terms of how much that, how many brains that's gonna, that's gonna cause them. Uh, this would make it... 4-1 would also make it die to... This, someone's showing me some other things here. What about Acid Rain, which is a very weak power? Once this becomes 3-1, Acid Rain becomes better. And you know what? Acid Rain could... Especially for Brain Freeze, who has really bad power. We'll talk about Brain Freeze as a hero in general in a bit. Brain Freeze... You know, Acid Rain getting a buff is fine. Nibble getting a buff is really good. Maybe 4-1 four, maybe is the way. Maybe causing some of these guys to die to the one the one damage is useful. Maybe Firework Zombie becomes viable then. Really, right now, Barrel and Fireworks as control is not very good. Um, they're they're good to like buff Valk and you know funny stuff like that. But uh, maybe that's what it makes Barrel Barrels a thing again. An actual control card. 4-1? I could hear 4-1. I think 4-1 or 3-2. I think 3-1 is too weak. Cause then it's just it's a bong choy that stays on the that stays with his three one. I don't. I think that's too much of a burf, of a of a of a of a nerf. Nerf, of course, making a card weaker. Three one or four three three two or four one. I'm actually I was kind of stuck on three two. I'm kind of much more in the four in the four one camp now because realizing the ramifications that will have on nibble and acid rain and 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 barrel of dead beards. And stuff like that. Seems like the chat likes 4-1 better too. I, I I like that. Make it keep it just as powerful, but make it counterable. And make nibble. Make nibble be uh on the same level as Bungie Plumber, at least close to the same level as Bungie Plumber and Rolling Stone. I'm 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 for it. I like it. 2-4 is not, because then it's not an aggro card. You ruined the card that way. Okay. Now, as I promised, we're going to be getting on to the zombie removal. Let me try to explain this one more time. The, the plant removal is way better than zombie removal, even at the same cost. So even though I said squash should probably cost seven, I do think locust swarm, swarm should stay at five. And I, let me just explain this one time for those of you who did not see the why sham rocket is a problem and rocket science is not a problem. For the zombies, because they play their minions on the field first... There is a very big commitment to wait and play Locust Storm. Because let's say on turn five, you're sacrificing potential five brains worth of minions in order to just remove one plant. And if the plants, if you pass turn five in, in an attempt to play Locust Storm, the plants play, instead of one big minion, they play three small ones. This Locust Storm is such a bad play. I mean, you are screwed because you can remove one. Now they have all this tempo on the field and you're only removing one for the exact same cost. Uh, it's the same thing even for Rocket Science, uh, even at a lower lower cost. And this is, again, why this card will probably want to nerf this a little bit, but uh, not to the point, not, not to doubling its cost to six. Because, again, even on turn three, let's say they didn't play anything on turn three and you're a zombie and you pass, maybe they'll play it, make a big play. Maybe they'll play Muscle Sprout, Puff Shroom. Maybe they'll play... Uh, you know, something that dies, which there's not a whole lot, let's say on turn three or turn four, they're not necessarily going to play anything that dies to rocket science. So if that's your idea, you keep rocket science in your hand and they play minions that don't die to the four attack, to the, to, they don't have four attack or more, you've just lost your turn. They put all this tempo on the field and you've done nothing. Uh, so that's why it's a huge, like, sacrifice to even not play zombies that turn and wait till rocket signs now the plants never have that sacrifice and that's why cards like squash and shamrocket are so much more reliable because the zombies unless they're teleporting in their minions which is the one exception that's why teleporting is in is so good um, if you see the big zombie on the field, you just shamrock it. They could have played it that turn. You can still just shamrocket it. There's no risk of running this in your deck. You never have to give up and make this big risky shamrocket play. Um, at the risk that they're just going to play a whole bunch of small cards. It's the reason why shamrocket counters gargs really, really well, as opposed to rocket science and Lo like locust storm is an almost unplayable card. Because again, as I just explained, big plants are way better right now. Than big zombies because plants have last say. The zombies just throw 
throw the zombie out in the field and say, do whatever you want to it, or make a really ridiculous combo play. Um, which again, the when the big plant is played, the zombies usually can't do a combo play unless they have some really weird teleport valve bonus attack. There's only very specific things. When it comes to uh, the plants, though, when a big zombie is played, the plants can play a minion, buff it up, do a bonus attack, and just do a ridiculous amount of damage just because you've committed all of your resources into playing that big Gargantua. Uh, a really, really important distinction between plants and zombies. Nonetheless, I like Piano at 4. It's unreliable, but it's really powerful. I like Locust Swarm at 5. I think, again, this is, this is just for this reason, is actually balanced at 5. I don't even think there needs to be a meta where huge plants are viable, but, I, I you know, again... I could see Rocket Science. Here's two cards, though, that I would like to get nerfed. I do think Rocket Science uh, is, should be four, just to sort of make removal a little bit slightly more even. I think at four, this is actually exactly where it should be. Um, but they're, the main card that we have to talk about <laughs> as removal... Guys, this card is way too good. Th this at two is mind-blowingly good. This is just, this is just, uh, it's so, <laughs> guys, two costs, you can remove almost any plant in the game. What has more than seven health? Soul Patch, um, it doesn't work on a Potatosaurus. <laughs> this is for two, guys. This counters everything. This counters Pecanolith at five, which is a good card. It counters most of the Gatling P. It, it's just everything. This is... This is crazily, crazily primal walnut. Thank you. You can't counter that. All right. So what would I do? What would I do about exploding fruitcake? Uh, same thing, but it costs four. I think at four or five. I feel like lo right locusorm at five. I'm gonna say exploding fruitcake at four. Now, even though that's still an amazing, amazing trade against a lot of plants at four, because this counters six, seven cost plants. Uh, this will be an answer to, like, having an, by the way, having an answer to Cop Cannon and to 3 to Chomper and all these cards is still a good thing. And also having an answer to Wingnut. I mean, you need there to be an efficient answer. You can't have Exploding Fruitcake cost more than four or else Wingnut is way too good. I mean, this is anyway a really, really good card that's really only countered by Wingnut and, and Knockout. Are the only two cards that really counter this. Um... You need fruitcake to cost four, but just imagine though building a control deck. Your Valk, your 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 Valk or Trickster decks, your any of your late game control decks that have the crazy class in them, and this costs four. And the next, the next, you know, the next card that you could use to remove it would be I don't know. Let's say Rocket Science also costs four, like. I would go with Fruitcake over Rocket Science. Think of both of these cards called 4. I would still choose the Exploding Fruitcake because the answer is Mechanolith. The answer is Wing. The answer is a whole bunch of things that are going to be messing up your deck. It's actually just so much more reliable. People are saying, what about Cake Explosion? Because then it completely outclasses Cake Explosion. Um, first of all, yeah, this is an uncommon, so I don't mind that. I, obviously, it has the it does three more damage, but it conjures your opponent fruit, which, by the way, is a much better penalty than Haunted Pumpkin. So I, I don't the fact that it outclasses it, I think is okay. Maybe you can make this cost three if you need a mid range replaceable thing. I don't know if Cake Explosion is too good at three. It's probably not too good at three. If you really want Cake Explosion to be viable and not be outclassed, make it cost three. What about Wrath then? I, I don't know. I don't I don't think you need to change Cake Explosion at all. Make Cake Explosion the one that does four, and make Exploding Fruitcake the one that conjures your does three more damage and conjures your opponent in a card. The seven, though, you can't nerf the seven. Because, again, then you miss Pecanolith and Wingnut, which you, there has to be a good answer to those. There has to be. Besides, for, you know, at least in more than one class than the Hardy class. Um, I really like what these changes would do. And, again, at four, let me just reiterate one more time, though. At four exploding fruitcake, even though it counters six and seven cost cards, you still have to make that risk. You do not know as the zombie that they are going to play a three-headed chomper this next turn. You just don't have that information. You're going to have to hold back on four brains in order to be able to maybe counter a really, really big card and conjure them, give them some card advantage. If they just play a couple small dinosaurs on the field, this is horrible at four. Um... 
So anyway, I, 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 you know, now that I'm thinking, before I get into, uh, okay, I'm going to get into two ramifications of the exploding fruitcake nerf that I feel like we really need to consider. One of them is a really good one, which is Knockout. This card has this really solid place in the meta. I would love to see the Hardy class be able to actually be a viable control class. It's just so underpowered compared to Exploding Fruitcake <laughs> and things like Rocket Science. I like Knockout, and I really hope that that would make Knockout appear in more decks, um, which would then make Briar Rose a lot, a lot worse and stuff like that. It would make Wingnut a lot worse. The reason Wingnut is too good is because Knockout is too bad. Once Knockout is played more, Wingnut becomes played less. So you won't even need an answer to it in your decks, just how metas work. Um... There's one other card I'm having an issue with right now. When I'm thinking about um thinking Mata Mata Hiru. Ma Math, long time. XYL. It's raining here, so if the internet actually goes out, uh I just see the lights flickering a little bit, so I hope there's not gonna be a thing. It's like record winds. I had a wind warning and it's raining in Toronto, so that, that could easily knock off a tree and get a power line. So if the stream stops abruptly, don't worry, I'm okay. It just means I lost power. But anyway. Okay, when I'm thinking about the fruitcake nerf to four cost, which is really where I think F3 fruitcake is, is still way too good. There's two cards I think about. One of them is a problem, which is Triceratops. If you fruitcake Triceratops, you're fine. <laughs> it's a two cost for two cost card. Honestly, this card probably becomes way, 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 way too good. When, when you, when a fruitcake becomes four. Because there's no there's no answer to this anymore. I mean, knockout will work on three. Knockout would still work on three unless you buff this. Because again, on, on turn three, this has natural two. So if you play Holoflora, it's already at four. If you only play Primal Walnut, so it's at three, it still dies at least one to one knockout. But again, you're using a three cost card to remove a two cost card, which is not really good. This whole thing would actually make cards like um. Hibernating very better, by the way. This would become playable if Rocket Science costs four, because then it's you buff this once and you're good. I don't this having less health though. Thank you, Inferno Breath. Uh welcome to the Primally Inferno Breath, Twitch Prime sub. So okay, let's think about try Triceratops. Try Triceratops, the FBI 60. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Primally with a paid sub. Try Keratops right now, before we do any nerfs, any buffs, anything like that. Before any of that theoretically happens. Try Keratops right now today, which is on November 15th, 2020. Is actually, like, a good argument for the best card in the game. It's so reliable, it's almost impossible to remove on, on, on turn two, and then it buffs itself on three, it has Bullseye. Like, what do you do? Remove the bulls? Like, I don't see the stats that work. The problem with plants, like Doubled Mint, you know, and Lily of the Valley, the reason these are such unplayable cards right now, we'll go to the Mega Hero class, I'm going to talk about these right now, actually, anyway, when we talk about the removal nerfs. The reason this is a bad card is because it dies to Rolling Stone, dies to Nibble, B Bungie Plumber, Beam Me Up, Teleporting in a One Drop, so, uh, uh, extinction event. This stat line, the one, two, the two health for a two drop, it makes these cards unplayable. The same thing with Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley at one, three was a really good card. At one, two, it's almost unplayable. It dies too easily. We'll talk about Con Man later. We'll talk about Con Man later. Um, so, yeah. One thing that actually happens when you nerf Shamrocket and you nerf Rocket Science is Doubled Min actually becomes better, a lot better, a whole lot better. And the reason is because there's two problems with Doubled Min. The first thing is that it gets removed on turn two. The second problem is, is that if even if it, if it survives turn two, it'll just get fruitcaked or Shamrocketed on turns three or four. So it's still easy, to, relatively easy to counter on the off chance that it even survives. Once Rocket Science becomes nerfed and Fruitcake becomes nerfed, Double Min actually just got a lot better. 
because now it only has one risk. If it passes that risk, it's home free and you're gonna have to spend a four cost card removing a two cost card, which is really good for the plants as opposed to them using something that only costs two or three. Um, so that's something I actually like. I wonder if doubled mint would work as a one, two, if we were to nerf big removal. It would be a huge risk, but maybe it works. Maybe you have to give this team up. Is giving this team up too good? What about giving this team up? It still dies to Rolling Stone. It still dies to Bungie Plumber. It just doesn't die to beam me up and summoning and, and bats. It just doesn't die to beam me up summoning and bats. And Nibble still makes it pretty useless because then it becomes a 0-2 the next turn. So Nibble becomes good now too, that double man. What about just giving this team up? I think 1-3 for this is too... It's just another Triceratops and it grows twice as fast. It grows exponentially faster than Triceratops. So especially if we're suggesting removing, you know, the big removal cards in that world. Making this a 1-3 is not good. And making it a 0-3 is also not a viable thing because then it has no attack and you always need another card. It's never good by itself. 2-3 is way too... 1-3 is OP. 1-3 for double min is way too good. It's just a it's just a Triceratops. Thank you, Pickle Plays, for the 200 bits. Streaming me. Yeah. So, I mean, a double mint would then only work if you fertilized it the next turn. If you play with Lily of the Valley, that's the only time it would gain attack. Zero three is not an option. I think one two team up could actually solve this. And would also then be, it would just, again, Bungie, Plumber, Rolling Stone, Nibble still counter it. So your main removal cards do, but then it just doesn't die to, it will die to flick the next turn to knockout. It'll die really well as a team. Actually, that makes Knockout better because now people are playing more team-ups. <laughs> On turn three, you have a really good team-up to hit. Three cost one three is too strong. It's just Triceratops on steroids if it's a three good two cost one three. Three cost one three? It's too weak. Three cost one three? Make it a three two. I think it's also too strong. Three two. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Let's try to let's try to <laughs> limit the trolling for today's stream. Thank you so much, Mr. Pickle. It's your last warning because we're having a serious discussion. Three cost one four. Maybe something like three cost one four would work. Maybe. Don't want in a in a again in a meta where where removal is expensive, cost four to remove a plant. Three cost one four. Seems pretty good. Three cost one four. One three would be too weak. Three cost one four would work. I think two cost one two team up because you've just eliminated. You haven't completely eliminated beam me up. But at least you have a chance at eliminating beam me up. Uh, but you're also eliminating. You're also. Thank you for doing your bits. Dash. You're also eliminating um, uh, summoning bats. You're making all those cards that Morticia and Professor Brainstorm, by the way, all those cards that they control, you're making them a lot worse. I wonder what three costs one for. I wonder if that's, is that too good? It's kind of like slow, like really powerful, but really slow because you're putting a one four on the field. Do nothing because of removal nerf. Again, even even with the removal nerf, I don't think this is actually playable even if you, if you nerf removal, but maybe, maybe you do nothing. I think adding team up to this doesn't do an astronomic amount because it's only... You can only utilize the team up on turn two when you are making a play on turn one that survives, which those two conditions are are pretty rare in themselves. But at least gives it a gives it a shot. Making this untrickable is a really bad idea, guys. <laughs> really, 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 really bad. All right. Um, now that we've talked about Lily of the Valley, I, I don't think this is good enough on two. And this is the only time you can ever play since you're playing this on three with Shroom for two. It's, it's too hard. There's not enough good plays. They, this used to be a one three. I can see this becoming a zero three in order to actually make this playable again. That's really what I kind of wanted to see Lily of the Valley get nerfed to the first time. Because then also if you play the buff Shroom on turn three, which is the main combo. Lily on two, buff Shroom on three. Ridiculous. This becomes a four three. The Lily used to become... At 1-3, it used to become then a 3-4, which is really, really good. This time it only become a 2-4, which in terms of making trades, the difference between 3-4 and 2-4 is so great in terms of how they trade against a 3-3 or against a 4-3 or uh, against another 2-4. Uh, I guess a 2-4 doesn't make a difference, but anyway. Um, 
Lily at one, I think, is too strong. Even one cost one one might be a little too strong with the two two buff. I think zero three is right for Lily. This that's actually how I feel like would make this playable. A huge again, if they play beam me up, it's a huge liability because it's not doing anything until you buff it. It's not doing any damage. I wonder if the one attack was actually a liability because it pings opponent's block meter. I d I don't really know. Two cost. I don't think this works anywhere except for two. Two cost zero three. It's like banana bump. It's exactly banana launcher. I have exactly the same stats. It's the card that it's easy to exploit for free, but in the meantime, it gives you some value. And it's a big risk, but big reward. Um, all right. Let's move on to some of the other cards. Uh, what was the one that people were talking about here? Should we do Pogo Mixed Up Gravedigger next? Okay. This is... Okay. I, I'm actually, before I get to Pogo Mixed Up Gravedigger, I'm going to talk about a, a, a superpower right now that I feel like after removal, after that problem, there's still one problematic card in the game above everything else in my opinion uh and that is the superpower time to shine and this is an unfixable superpower this is why captain couple you want to know why repeat moss combo is so broken this is the problem really his superpower doing this with repeat moss and bringing that up to six attack Bringing this up to six attack is like is is, is fine. It's this does eighteen. <laughs> it's time to shine. This is way too strong. This is easily the best superpower in the game. Bonus attack for one is a really 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 bad idea. The problem is too. There's no way of fixing this. This also just makes grass knuckles right now. After Captain Combustible, you can make an argument that Grass Knuckles is the number two because of all the bullseye and the Triceratops. And again, there are the two heroes that have this. These two heroes getting a nice nerf would be amazing. Would be really, really, really good. The only thing I could possibly suggest, which would mean a complete rework because there's no way to nerf this card. You can't make this cost two. It's not how superpowers work. Um, would make this complete rework and say, grant a plant double strike. Or something like that which would make it a lot worse which is fine because then captain combustible's powers become in the realm of being balanced instead of them having four overpowered cards he'll have three overpowered with one that's underpowered which is fine um yeah give it to another hero i mean maybe giving this to another hero would work like give it to green shadow and take green shadows um these are the two, this is the one Mega Grow one. Which other Mega Grow card would actually work in Captain Combustible's kit? Give him like Holoflora. And give the, give Captain Combustible Holoflora. And then gr give Green Shadow, instead of Blow, give her, give her, give her, give her, uh, <laughs> just switch the two. Meaning Chompzilla and, I, I think Chompzilla having time to shine actually is way too good because, uh, uh, Magnifying Grass becomes Magnifying Grass. She also has some other problematic cards like um, Astrocado. Astrocado Time to Shine is so, it's, no, it's way too good. Honestly, Green Shadow Time to Shine is going to be a problem too. There's going to be ways. Even Cartillery Time to Shine is going to be ridiculous. Um, Green Shadow needs blow. <laughs> anyway. I, I think, honestly, this card needs to be... No matter what hero you're going to be able to put this on, it's going to be... Imagine you have dragons with, with Green Shadow and you're able to do Dragon Fruit Time to Shine. <laughs> it's too strong. This is not a balanced card. Give a plant double strike. That's the only thing I can think of for this. It has to be completely reworked, which, you know, obviously. Reworking cards. Imagine them doing anything at this point. Starfruit time to shine would be way starfruit uh <laughs> starfruit combo like uh like you're right star onion rings and then turn six you have starfruit time to shine that is so that's 20 damage no it's not balanced right you just found with green shadow it's ridiculous time to shine has to be gone it has to be gone <laughs> onion rings starfruit time to shine even cards like like rotobega buff time like rotobega bog time to shine is is an eight damage count it's ridiculous and there's a lot of other things you can do so uh this this again and 
when you're talking about the Garg meta that I would love to see late game zombies, the other, there's two problems with Gargs. One is if you play on the field, it gets removed by Shamrock. Okay, so we're, we've addressed that. The other problem is you stick a six cost guard in the field and they go, they go repeat moss, f f f uh, blazing bark, time to shine. And that one guard that does five or six attack, is, it's just, you just can just combo them. This makes the combo potential on the plat side a lot worse. One thing I really used to like, particularly in Grass Knuckles, let me get into this now, about Time to Shine, is the fact that it makes a lot of the big cards playable. Like Potted Powerhouse, for example, is only usable with Captain Combustible and, uh, and Grass Knuckles because it's so expensive, it's so hard to buff up Potted Powerhouse. Uh, which is the card again which grows every single time one of your minions on the field grows that the only way to ever make this even viable and still not even that good is by playing it on turn six together with time to shine because then at least you can utilize those big stats in an efficient way once we're nerfing fruitcake and rocket science and removal and you're making a garg meta where there's a lot of guys playing big gargs in the field so they're not even going to have the four the four brains to remove pot of powerhouse pot of powerhouse just becomes good this actually becomes playable when you nerf removal. This maybe is one of, the, one of the main cards I'd love to see actually playable in a r random plant deck on the plant side that is just too easily countered by, by, by zombie removal. So, I don't think this would need a buff as long as we nerf removal on that side. And again, once time to shine, you're not going to need time to shine to make this a good card. The stats are going to be able to speak for themselves. Right now in this game, stats say almost nothing about a card because removal is too easy. That's what I'm saying. All right, the next obvious thing we're gonna get to, I'll talk about Beta Caratina's superpowers maybe in a bit. The next obvious thing, this would be number three. The first is all the removal in the game gets completely nerfed. Second thing, time to shine. It's a humongous problem. The third thing, of course, is this combo right over here. Pogo mixed up Gravedigger, especially the mixed up Gravedigger. Once we're nerfing removal, Maybe Pogo really does become a because at the end of the day, I would say even better than Fruitcake, if Pogo mixed up Gravedigger is the best removal combo in the game. Like Pogo answers everything, plus it answers Dragon Fruit for only four cost. It answers untrickable minions. Pogo is a humongous, humongous problem. Pogo is really the number one craft for people after maybe Flame Face for your Pyrotex. Go get some Pogo, and this is so powerful. This also just the two two sticking in front of something is one reason why Pogo is so good, because. You commit your pogo, this can be stuck in front of one of their cards left over from last turn that are a problem. Something cheap, but it's fine. You usually die to two attack. Very often, I'm playing against Agro Solar Flare, they have a Pumpkin or a, or a Blooming Heart that has grown a couple turns. You stick pogo in front of it, then you knock the next card they play off, whatever it is, the Astrocado plus, or whatever they're playing on turn four, plus you have your pogo on the field to counter the two health. So it blocks damage, removes one of their minions, and then removes a huge minion. I mean, it's just too much value. For a four cost card and mixed up gravedigger at five cost five five i don't even know what to say about this this is way too good i mean maybe the rework is just making pogo cost five and mixed up gravedigger cost six i was really thinking about mixed up gravedigger honestly I, I was thinking about mixed up gravedigger as just keeping it five costs but lowering its stats again the amount of tempo this gives you on the field after when it's played after pogo you're bouncing but you're also getting this big five five minion on the field so it gives you all the stats and the opponent can't do anything so i was thinking maybe five cost three three five cost three three would still actually make this still one of the better cards in the game I'm serious not five four this would need even five cost four four this card's just as broken at four four it really is just as good i i three 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 four maybe but now that you know now that we're saying pogo I wonder if Pogo's the problem. Again, this there's a there's a really tough balance here because when I'm thinking about nerfing Pogo to five costs, my main concern now becomes Triceratops and Doubled Mint. If we're you know, if Doubled Mint's gonna get gonna get off the hook. <sighs> Doesn't nerfing removal make the the meta aggro base. No, it, it'll make late game cards better, but early game removal and field clear stay the same. Bungee Plumber, Chickening, Knockout, Rolling Stone, Nibble, all those cards stay the same. So big removal. Aggro relies anyway on cards that don't die to big removal. They just rely on cards uh, 
that died a small removal. So really, you know, the problem with aggro decks is not fruitcake and shamrocket. What are we gonna do about Pogo Mug? Like, what if we made Pogo Mug keep this at four, make it a one-one, and then mixed up Grave Digger, turn it into a three-four. And now this at least doesn't counter two health minions. There's still gonna be if we're making Haunted Pumpkin into a four-one, then this would still counter the Haunted Pumpkin. Weed spray. Weed Spray doesn't do a lot against aggro because it's usually high attack guys, but Knockout at least would do something. Make Mug not reactive abilities? I think that's the whole fun part of Mug. I don't want to kill Mug. I don't want Mixed Up Grave Digger to be a useless card. I think the whole fun thing about Mixed Up Grave Digger is the fact that it it reactivates the abilities and kind of resets all of your all your zombies. So I would not like to see Mixed Up Grave Digger not do that and that would also be a rework that would be unnecessary you can either make this cost more or give it way less stats i like mixed up grave digger mixed up grave digger is a fun card what about six what about pogo at five and mug at six and not change their stats at all honestly i think that's fine because then again pogo still pogo still counters pogo really is too good pogo still counters any five or more cost plant really really well my only issue is Triceratops. I don't know what the hell to do about this. This throws all all of my all of the suggestions we're making about nerfing the big removal. Triceratops becomes so good. I can't even take it. Making this into a 1-2 doesn't help. What about a 0-3? What about a 0-3, which makes it easier to Rolling Stone or knock out the next turn? And keep the bullseye. Two cause zero three. You know what also becomes really good? I didn't even talk about this yet. You know what becomes really good when you nerf removal in this game? Is the long lost forgotten cards in the sneaky class, which are deadly. This card, Toxic Waste Imp, even like teleporting in a Cosmic Imp, Laser Base Alpha, you're gonna need to rely on these much more to have efficient removal. Right now these suck. And even Barrel of Barrels is just not a good card. I think Barrel of Barrels works at two once, once Fruitcake costs four. Because now it's not even a commitment. It's obviously less reliable because you're sacking a minion as well. But Deadly just becomes good. It's just a side point. Backyard Bounce. We could probably keep this at three. This is still a really good card. <laughs> even at three. It's so outclassed by Pogo. I wonder if we'd have to change Backyard Bounce to... No, maybe keep Backyard Bounce at three. Maybe Backyard Bounce becomes the answer to Triceratops. I feel like you need this to stay at two also, because really, if you get rid of Triceratops, the Guardian class sucks. There's no good two-cause cards. Spike Weed Sector. Yeah, yeah. Oh. How about Juggernaut making a... Juggernaut's really good. It's just outclassed by tri Triceratops. Maybe turning Triceratops into a three-cost card is the way? Three cost one four? Three cost one four. What does the Guardian class have on three? Nothing. Health Nut? Nothing really. I mean, it has a few decent cards, but it doesn't have. Health Nut's the only really good tempo card. This is going to become better in a less controlling meta. And then, I'll tell you the thing. Now, removal's nerfed, but by the time this gets to having. Being a humongous problem at 1-4, now turn 4 now, it's only a 2-5, and you're gonna, you're slowing this down, you're at least able, that's turn 4, you're at least able to use the Fruitcake on this on turn 4, you're still gonna lose a ton of tempo, because you're using your whole turn 4 play to take care of a 3 cost card, but it's fine. Backyard Bounce also would end up being an answer to Triceratops, Backyard Bounce would be good. Triceratops, rework it to a 3 cost 1-4. I think 1-3 would be too weak on turn 3, but 1-4 would be fine. With the bullseye. Keep the bullseye. I don't want to rework anything, Dynamar. I think, honestly, that makes me not panic. And also, Triceratops being on 3 and Pogo being on 5 works now. Because that's only the third turn in the life of this Triceratops. 
I don't think Backyard Bounce should draw a card. Backyard Bounce is already a really, really good card, and nerfing Pogo just makes Backyard Bounce a viable option now. It's actually come really, 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 really good. It's worse than Spring Bean because it's a zombie card, so that's why Spring Bean would cost four, but Backyard Bounce would only cost three. It's just, it's just basic card game knowledge here. I feel like I'm playing Legends of Rune Terror right now. This guy named Marsman, but that's right. Legends of Rune Terror got it right because there's a the card. I think it's called Vengeance. Destroy a a guy costs seven, which is why the late game in Legends of Rune Terror is fun. Field clear, destroy a bunch of guys costs nine. Even bouncing a minion costs five. I think if they started at three, they turned it to four. I think it's by at five now because it it just made all the six cost cards unplayable if you can bounce a guy for for three. I'm still saying back air bounce because of the way zombies work, that it's a huge liability to, you know, to rely on a, on a good backyard bounce. But I think you can keep this at three. What about just making Pogo cost five and mixed up Gravedigger cost six? I haven't played Legends of Runeterra in a long time, as you can probably tell. Bananasaurus Rex is fine, because it dies to so many. On turn three, it has very, very poor stats. And again, it's, it's the same turn as Fruitcake and Rocket. So you're not actually losing by rocket sciencing the the the, the Bananasaurus Rex. And do you know what also becomes good? Locust Swarm. Locust Swarm's great. Loc Bananasaurus Rex on four. At least you'll have, at least you'll have an ant. You're, it's going to be hard to catch up, but at least you did something on four. Hopefully you did something on four that's not going to make you too far behind of that Bananasaurus Rex. You know? I don't think Bananasaurus Rex becomes too good. I think for the removal being the same cost as Bananasaurus Rex is fine. I don't think it becomes too good. What about Sizzle? Um, does this make Sizzle viable? I think it does. If Shamrock get cost six, Sizzle becomes viable, right? <laughs> Who would have known? Sizzle actually has a use now. It does five damage. Five answers a lot of things. Maybe this needs to be four. Would this be too good at four? I can see this costing four. I don't really need Sizzle to work, but it actually has a use at five now. <laughs> a lot of late game have five health. Eh, if you wanted to change Sizzle, maybe four would be right. Four or five damage. You know what else becomes viable is Cherry Bomb. This is this is one of the most classic cards in the game, and it's a powerful card. But it just... <laughs> if you have to pick between remove one minion or do four damage to three guys, especially in this big late game meta where you're going to be having Goliaths clash with each other, that's part of what you're going to see. You have to understand what this meta is going to do. The zombie hero is going to play Super Nova Garg, and the plant hero is going to try to play something really big to counter it. I don't know what the counters are going to be because zombies have ridiculous stats. The reason why they did all this but is because the zombies have really, really good stats. What do you actually have on 5 to counter Supernova Garg right now? Uh, you'll have Onion Ring combo. Ugh. You'll still have Bounce. But maybe you don't have to... Maybe it doesn't have to be removed off the field. Like, maybe you just... Maybe you just develop a splash play. You know what also counters it is this card. Which Hazel becomes so gr perfect right now in this meta? Which Hazel is a good card now? <laughs> in a Garg meta, this, this is amazing. I don't even think it's too good. There's still a lot of answers to it. And even worst case scenario, you Briar Rose combo them the next turn. You develop your own five attack with your with your Astrakata. Even this. This card, this card actually counters Supernova Garg on five. Allosaurus as a stat card. This wasn't a stat card. You know why? Fruitcake was too good. This has great stats. Rocket's not. It's just not at five. It was too expensive. Now you're only losing one if they use their rocket science on this. Allosaurus. We just fixed Allosaurus. This is a viable stat card. This counters almost any guard they play on five. Allosaurus is an answer to it. You know? We'll talk about heal decks in a second. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, so I think Pogo 5, mix up Gravedigger 6, and keep the stats. I like it. I really, really like it. I thought of nerfing this stat-wise. I really, really, really like this now. 
You know, Shark becomes a viable card. This still dies even to Shamrocket, but at least this is playable. This is unplayable right now. It's not completely unplayable.